Thank you. I can use the mic. You have a mic? I can use the mic. Uh, I, I, hold <laughs> I hold and I give. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay, like this. It's okay. It's okay. Okay, okay. okay. И что, какое э, выступление еще можно будет какой-то внешний компьютер использовать или свой только? Ну, я не знаю, я ну, камерами. А, только это, да? Окей, okay. okay. yes, thank you. Uh, test, test, test. Test, test, test. Это такая батарея. Это такая батарея. Это такая батарея. Это такая батарея. Это Ты там отлеп, а не глеп, нет? Не точно. Спокат, да? Да, 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 спокат. We keep our own time. We dance to the beat of our own drum. There was someone showing a card with one minute. Yes. Well, no, not really. Okay. Here, there's Let me check this. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Okay. No, 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 I have it. Uh -huh. okay. So is it five minutes or is it left? Five it's minutes. Five. We, have two minutes. we give it another couple of minutes. Okay. Yeah, so what's your role on there, Philip? Timekeeper. <laughs> I guess maybe leave it here. Maybe. You are, you are making this stress. <laughs> yes. The one stress minute, the two minutes and the one minute. <laughs> 20 at, seconds. Because I looked at the an online meeting, like an online meeting from 2021, you had a long beard back then. No? Me? No. <laughs> <laughs> Questions? No pressure. Fresh air, what's that? <laughs> okay, thank you very much for uh, coming to these talks. Uh, our first lightning talk is from Malta. Uh, I am Tony, this is Enrique. For those of you who were in Ohrid last year, we gave a similar presentation. This in some ways is an update of what happened in the last year. Uh, the, just as a reminder, as Wikimedia Community Malta, we are based in Valletta, we are very small, but we deal not only with the Maltese language, but also English, which is an official language of Malta. Uh, we have one part-time employee who is only working one day a week, so this, as you can see how small it is. However, we are a registered NGO um, for quite some years, and we are uh, a fully affiliated um, a user group of the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, when you look for Maltese as a language on, on Wikipedia, you have to scroll down quite a bit because it is less than, than uh, 10,000 articles. So if we, uh, yeah, you, if we find it, you will see it's there, but it is there, it exists. This is a language that is spoken by less than half a million people in the world and written by even fewer, of course. Uh, this is a timeline to show you how long the Maltese language Wikipedia has been around. It's been around almost 20 years next year. Uh, but we came around after it already existed for 10 years, but there was next to nothing going on. Uh, there's quite a bit, and you can see that uh, the more uh, that we engage uh, with this language Wikipedia, more is happening, and we are now in the process of launching the second uh, Wikimedian in Residence program. You can also see, um, these are some of our basic um, uh, growth uh, slides, oh, but also, 
but also, <laughs> no, but also the, the spikes that we get whenever we organize CEE Spring. So this is why, uh, you know, if some of you are wondering why we are involved with CEE, this is why we are involved with CEE, because CEE Spring is a way for us to increase our article uh, numbers. However, uh, in the last uh, three or four years, we have been organizing uh, regular events. Uh, Wiki loves monuments. We used to organize something called Wiki Loves Art, a CE Spring, of course, and we used to take part in WPWP. But now, more recently, we've switched to Wiki Loves Folklore and Wiki Loves Earth. Uh, these work really well for us as, as photo contests. And uh, uh, the, you can even, if you look a little bit at the numbers, um, you know, I mean, it, with the articles, perhaps it's not so much uh, in terms of great numbers. We are one of the smaller. Uh, uh, groups organizing this, but then um, when we organize our Maltese language um, events, what we also get. Go ahead. No, and I wanted to say that what we found that really worked with our strategy is to go to events that also are uh, doing events around the Maltese language. So we uh, um, leave our leaflets, as you see in the first slide, and we get more of interest from people that love the language. As well, uh, uh, here it's one of the activities during CE Spring um, uh, at the University of Malta where we uh, encourage students and we go on the first day to show them how um, it is done and then they keep uh, doing it uh, on their own with their teacher. And, uh, yes, so, so this is as much as that is, but in a lightning talk we can only just tell you about it. I mean, then if you look at our numbers, for example, for Wiki Loves Monuments, uh, you can see that these are significantly more substantial than you would expect from a small community like ours. And the, the photos are fantastic. I mean, this is our, our winner from this last contest, which was placed 20th in the, in the international contest. So not so bad. This one was 16th in the overall uh, international contest. And this one from the previous year, I think, was 14th or 12th, something like that. 14th. So another, you know, um, but unfortunately, um, anyway. So... It, one minute. So, so uh, you can see that uh, when we come to also addressing the gender gap through uh, feminism and folklore now, which is how we are doing this again, our numbers here are, are you know, uh, quite revealing in terms of the size of our community. These are some of the images uh, we get for uh, Wiki Loves Folklore. Uh, but also since last year, we've also started doing Wiki Loves Earth. Again, uh, here the, the images are outstanding. This is a Maltese crab. This is under the sea in Malta. And this is a beautiful Maltese butterfly from this year. And uh, Yeah, and uh, basically we're uh, trying to engage more and have better content than too many content than, than we need to fix. And especially we're getting a lot of coverage from newspapers and also uh, trying to uh, be part of, for example, uh, uh, Friends of the Earth, which they helped also with this year. Collaborate. Thank you for the word. Um, uh, and especially with Malta Book Festival, where we, uh, it was the first time that we took part. It's the last slide. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, basically we had a stand where we could outreach better for people passing by at least we get them aware about wiki uh, the Maltese wiki and in fact we were doing uh, talks and people could stop by especially the last photo if you don't know the man in the picture talking to both of us is the Maltese president so at least we the could uh, of the Republic of Malta who stopped yeah. to say hello yeah <laughs> and also uh, do the pre uh, giving the, the prizes. gift prizes of the monuments folklore and dirt during that event. So people passing by know about it and know what's happening. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. My, I don't need presentation because my, um, uh, how would say, issue is related to commons and especially with that page. Okay. So, for the background, uh, we start working on freedom of panorama advocacy work in last year in January when we signed the memorandum of cooperation between uh, our organization, Wikimedia Community User Group Georgia, and with the present administration of the Georgia. 
Uh, after that, we start working on uh, some research uh, in uh, which EU countries, on the, not also EU, but also North American countries, uh, what's the law about uh, freedom of panorama and how we can adopt this uh, policy uh, changes in Georgia in our law. Uh, we conducted research, uh, then we prepared the proposal for the Parliament of Georgia, who needs to approve these changes in the uh, in the love of Georgia. Uh, the present administration helped us on uh, communication between the parliament and our user group, also with our lawyers, uh, and how we conduct the discussion with the parliament. And it's uh, going well, uh, because uh, this summer uh, we received invitation from the parliament, and we are going to parliament to discuss the uh, specified uh, clauses in the law, uh, and uh, the parliament agreed to uh, change this law. Uh, but uh, after one month, it's appeared there is some issue, and uh, we want to discuss what's the issue, and the, our lawyers show us this page, and especially this map. So, how do you think? What's the problem with that map? Yes, regions. Uh, as you see in this uh, map, uh, two regions of Georgia, especially Abkhazia and Samachablo, so-called South Ossetia, uh, was in different color. Yeah, uh, it's occupied territories of Georgia by Russia. Uh, in Georgian law, we are in integral country, we, and its uh, regions, it's our part, integral part of Georgia, by the, uh, not only by Georgian law, but also by the international law, uh, but it's currently occupied. And our lawyers said, yes, we can change this map, uh, sorry, this law, but you need to change this map, because how do you think we, uh, like, uh, allow something changes in our law when you are not, uh, how it's a, uh, uh, follow our rules, like the country's rules, which says that it, this is uh, the integral part of Georgia, and you are showing that this is not a part of Georgia. This map uh, shows the de facto what's going on in our country, because yes, currently it's occupied, and it's under the, not under the control of Georgian government, but it's still our territories and uh, not any country can, uh, how would say, allow his country, uh, his laws in these territories. Yeah, the main issue is that. But change this map, it's so tricky it's, and it's not easy because you need to conduct the discussion on um, commons and say the community that we need to change this map. And of course, uh, the community, and short yeah, and it's short time. I don't think that community will allow us. But uh, currently, yeah, one of, one of the active members of the commons community says it's not a lot. But we are trying to talk with the legal department at the foundation, and uh, we want to uh, present to com commons community that if we allow and change this map, it will give, give us more uh, opportunity to bring more image to commons from Georgia, because it will allow to us to like take any picture in country uh, and up upload this to commons. So, yeah, that's a stage and we are hope that we uh, change the mind of the community in commons. That's all from my part. Hello everyone. Uh, thank you for this opportunity and thank you for giving me the chance to tell you about the wonders hidden in a library. About the priceless books that are so strongly interconnected to all that Wikipedia means. My name is Elena Damian, I'm from Romania and I am a librarian. I say it loudly because I'm proud of being the person who takes care of books. I love books, I love reading and um, when I discovered Wikipedia it was like the most wonderful thing in the world. You see, I actually thought that Wikipedia was uh, some sort of special entity and that it has been there since the beginning of time and no one must interfere with that. Then came the wonder. I can be a contributor. Wikipedia is not like Noli Metangere, on the contrary. 
So for me, my personal experience is one of professional development, of progress, as I got the chance to exercise all those things I dreamt a librarian should do. It has become my way of expression, my way of communicating the values, the principles and the traditions of my country. And uh, now I'm getting to the point. The title of my presentation is A Book Journey, Completing the Circle from the Shelf to Wikipedia, from one person to all over the world. The circle I refer to in the title is how I see things are going. It means that somewhere there is a brilliant mind that writes a book. And this is not an easy task. You have the power to create something that shall forever remain. If that book is valuable, it shall be included in the public library's collections. First step ready. Now is where a librarian can show how to multiply the value of that same book. What is Wikipedia, in fact? We all know it is a huge free encyclopedia that needs specialized sources, that needs uh, accurate information in order to provide the best possible article. And the librarian has everything in his reach. All I have to do is go to the shelf, pick a book about a certain topic, and make it count on Wikipedia. So I don't actually think there is a problem of uh, conflict of ideology between the classic book format and virtual information. On the contrary, it's rather a matter of recognition of an universal accepted level of trust that uh, the things written, written in a book shall be read by millions and millions of people, definitely much more than if I would have left that same book on the shelf. So it's uh, my way of saying, hey, this book is important, look what it says. And I think it's the complete circuit of information and of knowledge. I would like to point out the importance of organizing workshops, training programs, debates and social events connected to this experience because there are so many public libraries that uh, could represent a potential source for Wikipedia and librarians can make the difference in what concerns the quality and authenticity of wiki articles by maintaining the neutral point of view and the diversity of information. Also, as a librarian, I am familiar to the five laws of Ranganathan regarding the, the mission of the public libraries and I strongly believe they are perfectly suitable to Wikipedia so Wikipedia is for use every person his or her wiki article every wiki article its reader save the time of the reader and Wikipedia is a growing organism nothing more true than that I believe now I'm, uh, I don't have that much experience uh, I must say next month it shall be a year since I first wrote something on, on uh, Wikipedia, but it was the best year. Um, I would like to mention uh, One Lib One Ref, an international campaign that uh, is perfect for librarians. And uh, this year we've succeeded in adding more reliable sources to wiki articles. And also Every Book It's Reader, another international campaign that is very special to me. This year was its first edition and I was one of the organizers in my country. And uh, I'm proud to say that practically this year during the month of April, a new book was born on Wikipedia every day. So I think I have all the reasons to say that being an editor on Wikipedia could be, and in my opinion, should be added to the librarian professional profile. Because you see, a, li a library is not just a building full of books. It's much more than that. Um, it's part of the community, of the educational system, and a librarian in the middle of Wikimedia is like the right person in the right place. Uh, just try to imagine this picture. A librarian in a small office, surrounded by hundreds of books, and a computer in front of him with uh, internet access, eight hours per day, every single day. But this is where you and your wonderful projects have to intervene because uh, this librarian must be encouraged, must be guided, and must be taught how to edit on Wikipedia. And then the possibilities would be unlimited. I am a librarian in a small library in a small town, but I have all the books I could possibly ever want. And uh, like me, there are so many others. You all know that uh, template on wiki articles, citation needed? Well, librarians have that citation. Uh, by the way, when, uh, when I came the other day, the name of my town is uh, Giorgio, which is very similar to Georgia, and people at the airport were uh, very excited about this similarity, and I think it was a good sign for me. Perhaps, I have this possibility. 
And now, as a conclusion, if I read it, you read it too. It means that whenever I find a valuable in information in a book on my library shelf, I have the possibility to increase its value, to make it count on Wikipedia in order that everyone should have access to that same information. And that's how I understand the purpose of books in the Wiki universe. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> Uh, and I think, yeah, maybe I can put it. Oh, here, yeah. yeah. So, um, Touch Wikipedia is active since uh, 2003, and uh, over these 20 years, the language section has grown to 500,000 articles, which reflect the history of both wiki and uh, cultural processes. Today, I would like to speak um, uh, of the latter, yeah. Um, yeah. So, uh, in my presentation would be more uh, images than the information. Uh, on, yeah, uh, the work of uh, contemporary Dutch culture workers reflects various aspects of the current cultural processes. All of this course of uh, these 20 years various uh, composers of popular and academic music, uh, singers thereof, theatrical actors, directors, playwrights, poets and uh, contemporary dancers, journalists uh, that report about such events are among those who are described within the Wikipedia. Uh, so cultural activities um, um, of Tata World are also reflected in Wiki. To be more precise, no one um, site, cultural phenomena are related to respective representatives of the people, uh, whilst on the other hand, uh, they are sometimes editing wiki themselves. A lot of cultural materials in Tata are created by editors, um, simply inspired by respective artists' contribution. Um, so thus, um, some cultural phenomena not yet widely known on the internet can be further complemented by th uh, citing printed sources. For example, Wiki is giving a chance to easily hyperlink articles uh, when, say, um, we are having a case of cooperation between contemporaries, thus uh, giving the reader a possibility to discover the biographies, at least. Thus, uh, Wikipedia systematizes, classifies, and categorizes contemporary cultural phenomena, structuring knowledge about the yet undescribed phenomena. Um, yeah. There are some articles uh, about actors, actresses in the presentation. You can also look at it uh, in my um, Wikipedia, it's in, um, in Wiki also, also my text. So, I have only one minute, I think. Uh, yeah, two minutes. Uh, two minutes, yeah. So, uh, history of Tata script is quite important uh, from this point uh, of view also. Um, for example, uh, related factors have significantly weakened cross generations contacts, I think, because um, respective changes of uh, script in 1928, tw uh, 1939, and possibly even uh, 2020 should be seen as a cultural split. So, uh, in Wikipedia, um, we have a project of Convector, and uh, maybe it will be, um, um, it will be in Wikipedia in uh, some future, in some future years. For example, um, I think uh, mm, the best solution will be a converter which uh, would be able to 
convert from Cyrillic to Latin and uh, also will uh, can also will um, will change to Arabic um, symbols. Yeah. So. What? Yeah. Um, for example, today only a small share of uh, Tata Wikipedia articles is written in Latin script. I'm going further. Um, articles, for example, about Tata instruments were also complemented by those about ethnic music types. For example, we can quote uh, some kind of genres like uh, Ozonki, Menejet, Ghazel, Beit, Kaskaki, as examples here. Yeah. Um, and um, I think the relationships between articles in this culture domain should be structured with uh, great attention and knowledge to um, Tata science. Um, when contributing information to Wikipedia, on, um, everybody should be as sensitive to the, to the philosophy of um, of the Tatcha, for example, culture or uh, some kind of uh, links of uh, to Tatcha culture as possible. For example, uh, when we translate articles. Um, I, um, I try to organize it, first of all, based on the exi existing examples in the target language, so in Tat language. Because uh, each can be some mistakes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, this, also, this area also faces a challenge related to the uh, scarcity of sources. Because, uh, for example, one article can be in the one way, and uh, in the in the uh, and the other article in the other way. For, so, thank you very much. I'm finishing. Yeah, I'm ready. Um, I come from Moldova. My name is George, um, and um, uh, what we did uh, there is a novel idea, which I'm. Uh, uh, I'm going to uh, tell, tell you all about today. Um, so if, you re if we recall uh, our uh, usual suspects, wiki, loves, monuments, earth, and folklore, and, and many more, uh, we know that they are usually uh, centered around some kind of a list, and uh, the winning photos uh, are actually the most high quality photos. But we as organizers, um, we... Um, we secretly want completion. Actually, we want uh, uh, we want to to see uh, quantity over quality uh, many times. Um, the participants to such contests uh, they often uh, only go to popular um, monuments. Uh, this one, uh, this church here, uh, it uh, was first place in Moldova last year, and it was 11th in the whole world. Um, but uh, it is very a touristic uh, magnet, you know, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in my country. Uh, such monuments as this one, uh, which are uh, far away or outright boring, well, it was not boring for me because I had a tire puncture while, um, while uh, finding it. Uh, people don't uh, tend to take photos of these, but we want photo photos of these. And here comes uh, this guy, me. Um, so the people on the bikes, they are... Uh, independently of what we do, they, they go on their bikes anyway. Um, how about we um, incentivize them to participate? So um, Wikilove's um, is, is already gamified, but what if we gamify it more? So um, the classical quest, like a city quest or something, um, what, what does it do? It, uh, um, it, it has like some, uh, the organizers give you so, like a piece of paper with some hints on it, um, and uh, with, um, um, in the end, for example, you, you should uh, find a treasure and you get points for that thing. Um, and everything, what I just said, is, uh, is, um, um, is set by the organizer. What if the participants themselves would, um, would trace their own routes 
and the hints would be the actual monuments. So they would have the incentives uh, to, um, because they receive points for each image, they would have the incentive to visit as many monuments as possible, uh, irregardless of where they are. And since they are on a bike, they can go in the forest, they can go everywhere. Um, and yeah, since they are there, um, why not take also um, um, photos of other, like, uh, other things, uh, like schools and uh, wineries and so on, like uh, this photo here. Um, we did this uh, last year, it was the first time. Um, we saw that people tend to not go far away. Um, and for that uh, reason, we, uh, um, we uh, ins instituted some compensation um, for, uh, for uh, food and transportation if they need to. Um, also, um, the uh, people who um, have, like, for example, more professional bikes, they have a better chance of winning. So uh, we, uh, I'm sorry about this, uh, we have uh, tiers for uh, different levels of uh, professionalism, so to speak. Uh, so those people who only go out and bike in their parks, uh, they would have a, diff uh, a specific tire uh, to, 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 to participate in. So yeah, uh, we had um, the numbers that you see on the left side, they account for 10% of the overall uh, figures for Wikilove's monuments in Moldova last year. That means that be, uh, uh, mm, thank, thanks to this bike quest, we um, had a 10% or 11% increase in our um, uh, results in Wikilove's monuments. We expect more. Um, the actual uh, ac um, the bike quest this year is uh, happening this month. So we don't uh, yet know the results, but I know that seven people have already uh, registered and they are on their way. Um, hmm? One, minute. One minute, okay. Um, so um, this uh, picture is uh, from, I believe, three weeks ago, three weekends ago, uh, by uh, a participant with, uh, who took uh, his girlfriend and uh, participated with her uh, in this by quest. This is uh, uh, on their way to, to some uh, new church. Um, that's all I had, I think. Uh, <laughs> feel free to take this uh, example. Of <laughs> uh, dear participants, my name is Natalia, and uh, I tried to present to you implementation of uh, um, course reading Wikipedia in, cl in classroom in Ukraine. Not only course uh, and uh, challenges uh, with uh, we, uh, uh, in in this process. Uh, at first, uh, I uh, um, uh, all of uh, we imagine all project first with idea, and uh, um, we start to think about um, uh, 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 education program, and uh, we communication a lot with managers, and uh, we seems uh, to see webinars uh, for teacher, uh, but uh, we have. Uh, another focus, and uh, previous manager for education program says, I Wikimedia Foundation have a course, and uh, it likes the themes what we want. And uh, we, uh, uh, let's try to implement it. Uh, in this implementation, I um, uh, separate five steps. In first steps, of course, we uh, a lot of com communication, how, uh, how I prepared, uh, grant proposal, and set, et cetera, et cetera. In second step, we localization and translate this course from Ukraine. And uh, if you want, this uh, show this uh, little little materials. Uh, we localization it for our teacher. In the second part, we work a lot <laughs> of uh, time, uh, our volunteers and our managers for implementation of this course, for localization of this course, for um, uh, uh, and uh, we uh, work uh, with uh, uh, one of the most biggest um, uh, Ukrainian massive online platform, Prometheus. Uh, this really a lot of work. Uh, and uh, when we finished this uh, 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 in uh, Prometheus, we uh, start to uh, this course uh, probably uh, at um, uh, uh, July. Uh, 
at end of July. And uh, now we have a very good, for my opinion, a very good result. We have um, uh, more than 70 teachers who finished this course. And uh, this course complete not only with uh, test, this complete with very uh, big uh, work at forum and uh, uh, final um, uh, lessons, uh, who uh, all of them uh, can um, describe and uh, we catch uh, feed feedback. But uh, uh, these results, um, we have these results and we have a, a very huge challenge, uh, especially because <laughs> we live in country, we live in war now. We live in war now. Uh, that's why I think a lot about how uh, to show you our challenges. But um, think, uh, for a few months probably, <laughs> but in 19, 19, uh, 19 September, I have a very interesting situation. Near my home uh, uh, crashed um, uh, drone kamikaze Shahed uh, 136. And um, I uh, realized that that's more challenges when we have. It's a um, um, safety place, our team, because uh, when team is not in safety, we have a <laughs> we haven't result, we haven't work, we can't do anything because when Shahed crashed near your home, uh, last of your things it, uh, about free knowledge, you think about safety, you think about uh, how do uh, how stay uh, in a safety place. Because surviving is <laughs> sometimes is very hard, and in safety, I uh, uh, part for uh, uh, two reasons: safety and mental. Because you can be in another country, we can uh, show any weapons without your window, but uh, you can be in safety at head in your heart. And uh, uh, second place, uh, uh, second step, and uh, this uh, when you have not been physically in safety. That's why uh, th this is a most bigger challenge. But we have a good result. We have finished this, this course. And uh, I proud our team. I proud all, all teachers who finished this course. And Slava Ukraini, шановні. Шануємося, бо ми всі того варті. Okay, uh, rare disease on Wikipedia. I'm Natasha Nedanuska, Macedonian language teacher in primary school, member of GLAM Macedonia, and uh, like a education educator and coordinator of Wiki Club. Uh, as the coordinator of Wiki Club Ohrit, I have achieved several partnerships with organiz organizations and public institutions. But this time I single out a five-year partnership with the Association for Rare Disease from Ohrid. The Association for Rare Disease from Ohrid, among, uh, among other activities, has campaign uh, that takes place every year in the month of February. In fact, February is the rare, rare month, which is why uh, it is recognized as Rare Disease Month. Every year in the month of February, articles on rare disease are read and published in several languages in all media. National television, private televisions, national radio, private radio station, internet portals, new, newspapers. In fact, um, each day is reserved, uh, reserved for only one rare disease, so 28 types of rare disease are treated. So that same rare disease that is covered in all media that day, an article has been covered and attached to Wikipedia in the Macedonian language. Before joining the campaign, we had a working meeting with the president of this association, Loleska Gordana. She gave us a short lecture about their uh, existence, their mission and vision conveyed to us the situation of people with rare disease in the country and uh, in the world and give us even more motivation to join this national campaign. We turned the meeting into a workshop in which we symbolically painted our palms in different colors as a sign of support, support for people with rare disease. 
as a sign of support for people struggling with uh, rare disease, our Wiki Club Ohrid, every year, five years so far, has a month-long editing marathon as part of the national campaign Light Up for Rare. For us, the month of February is a month for enriching the contents of Wikipedia in the Macedonian language and raising uh, awareness about rare disease under the motto, those who know about rare disease are not rare. So far, over 139 articles on rare disease have been pro processed on Wikipedia in Macedonian language, which represents a huge success and pleasure for us. This it will be one of posters announcing a new year's rare, rare, uh, new year's rare disease campaign. And here our plans. Next year, February 2024, we plan to dedicate Wiki Club Ohrid to articles about rare disease. We have already held a joint meeting where we uh, agreed to continue our cooperation. And in my opinion, this is an example of good practice. So thank you uh, for having the opportunity to share with you. Yes, the, uh, this shirt is exactly the flag of rare disease and that campaign in, in Ohrid. <laughs> Any other questions to any of the about any of the lightning talks? No, if not, um, I, I would be interested how this contest looks like in practice. I, I will be interested how this contest looks like in practice. What kind of instructions get uh, people? But uh, uh, yeah. Um, so in practice. Um, uh, it, uh, like I said, we, we yeah, yeah, yeah I, I'm trying. <laughs> um, in practice, uh, we um, adapted this quest format, right? Uh, what we s what we tell them is, uh, you have to um, accumulate as many points as possible. You receive two points per image of a monument. You receive one point per image of anything else. And they're such incentivized to go uh, uh, and see as many monuments as possible. Then in September, we uh, wait for their applause, actual applause on commons, which, uh, as, as, we, as I speak, uh, they're already happening. But the instruction is go anywhere and take photos of something. Yes, they can go anywhere in Moldova. Yes, uh, except the big cities where uh, all the buildings are five meters apart, uh, <laughs> apart from each other. Yeah. Any other questions? Any other questions? <coughs> Peter? Um, should I hold it myself? Okay. Yeah. No, just a quick um, update because I see that there's interest in that project. Spoiler alert, there is something about... Um, I have a talk tomorrow and we do a similar project in, uh, project in Albania, but not only with bikes. So, 
tomorrow at 9.30, follow me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Um, any other questions about any of the projects? Anton? Uh, yeah, thank you. I have a question uh, for the first presentation about Mauta, uh, about st staff member. You said that you have one person who is working one day a week. Could you maybe tell a bit more about your approach? What is this person doing and, and why did you choose to hire a person for like one day a week? Thank you. So the person is right here, uh, but uh, before she can tell you anything herself, I can tell you, I can answer the last part, why uh, we hired her. We uh, restarted receiving uh, an annual plan grant and to be able to coordinate this so that it is not uh, depending 100% on volunteers. But if some, we say something is going to happen, something actually happens, even if the volunteers decide not to come, uh, we, we thought we needed someone to come in. The community uh, and the activities are relatively small, and so we didn't think it should be more than two days a week. We advertised for this, and uh, we received uh, only one application. And uh, she, can tell you, she can tell you about the It's a very small community, you see. Well, I was already part of the community, a yeah, vol a volunteer, and I was already helping, you know, doing things, especially uh, promoting events and things like that. And uh, I think they they saw that what I was suggesting is what was working, and uh, they had more time doing other things than having to be like even just posting you know stories and in fact we saw a bigger engagement as well and i'm i felt that there needed more awareness not just engagement so uh, we at least um although we say one day a week of course i input more time and effort but at least uh, um i feel uh, that it, there is gratitude from uh, the community you know so at least um um, when I'm doing something, I know uh, that uh, I have to do it better than I used to do it before as well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so in the meantime, Mache has found his way to us. So, please. Uh, yes, <coughs> sorry. Hi. Uh, can, you, can you all hear me? Right. And the online? It's, it's just for recording this. So ah, okay. Cool. Okay, so uh, hi, welcome. My name is Maciej Nadzikiewicz. Uh, sorry for being late. I've been attending another session and I was 100% sure that lightning talks are tomorrow. Uh, yes, it, it wasn't because I don't care about the audience. It's just, uh, I'm terribly sorry. Uh, hi, I have a short lightning talk to share with you uh, about the program Let's Connect. I believe you've all heard about Harry Potter. There is the, now the spin-off, uh, the fantastic uh, animals and where to find them, fantastic beasts. I like to say that Let's Connect is the fi uh, fantastic skills and where to find them. In the Wikimedia movement, uh, we all have certain, uh, we all already have certain skills that we are good at. Uh, for example, uh, Philip can be considered an authority on hub making in the movement as running the first successful hub uh, we have some people that are masters uh, in GLAM, some people that have been doing education for many years, and some people that have been translating articles or uh, doing other uh, wiki things. Uh, Let's Connect uh, is a peer learning program that lets us connect people with the skills that they already have, with the people that are looking for the skills that they want to learn. It lets us exchange information, lets us exchange knowledge, and create groups of particular interest, either in the same region or in the whole Wikimedia movement, that we can uh, later exploit, <laughs> hopefully in a good way, uh, to further either individual projects or group projects as affiliates or hubs. Uh, yes. Uh, there is already a lot of learning material present on Meta. If you've ever been there, it's unnavigable, you cannot find anything, the search function for Wikimedia, yes, for Wikimedia is suboptimal. And Let's Connect lets you connect with an actual human. 
We already have, I think, more than 300 people registered as sharers for the Let's Connect. Uh, people are creating their profiles with the information that they want to share with individuals or they want to teach, or even run, run learning clinics, which are group projects where that sometimes 50 up to 60 people can learn about one topic at once, either as a lecture or as a, or as a workshop. We do that because we believe that l uh, learning from a live human, another person, is a bit more, much more rewarding than actually learning something from a written text that has been on meta forever, sometimes can be outdated, and sometimes can not be available in an easy to understand uh, format. Uh, let's connect, that I'll later also share uh, the link on Telegram, uh, hopes to encourage people creating bridges that haven't been there before. Uh, here at the CE meeting, we probably already know our friends. I know other people from Poland, I know other people from the Sea Hub, but I have also met people that I would have otherwise never met in person uh, or even online, just because I didn't think we have anything in common. By connecting people uh, according to their interests, we hope that we can encourage them uh, to share together what they have learned, but we can also encourage them to share together where they have failed. Uh, we encourage their honest reflection on, pro on projects. We encourage uh, a free exchange of information. Uh, and we encourage asking each other questions. There are no stupid questions. Okay, scratch that. There are some stupid questions, but hopefully not when you both want to learn. Uh, and... Mm, sorry, uh, running short on time. Uh, Let's Connect is a program supported by the Wikimedia Foundation. It is con currently being uh, coordinated by a group of volunteers uh, for the first part of the year. Uh, I was one of them for the CU region. Uh, and by this coordination from the Wikim Wikimedia Foundation, it means that we have resources to offer you if you either want to learn something or if you want to share something. Uh, Wikimedia Foundation can cover the costs of hiring uh, an expert person to share a certain topic if you want. Uh, Wikimedia Foundation can cover costs for uh, data packages if uh, access to internet is something that would otherwise stop you from attending that. I know it may be a smaller problem uh, in the CE, but it is a big problem in people from developing countries. Or we can cover the cost of translation if you want to share uh, this learning clinic or anything else with people in your region, in your country, that have troubles learning difficult topics in English. Uh, if you could come to Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I will uh, share the link to Let's Connect uh, and their meta pages on Telegram. I hope that you take a look around. You see a place that maybe you can share some of your knowledge with people from other regions of Wikimedia that would benefit from it. Or if there are topics that you yourself look to further yourself into, get more experience, get more expertise, uh, please sign up. Uh, every month uh, there are maybe not dozens but at least four to six different meetings on different topics and if there is an interest for you uh, to learn about something that is not on Let's Connect we will find a way. We will find you an expert and we will create a group clinic that you can all join, learn something, ask questions and hopefully benefit for yourself and for your communities. Thank you very much. Okay, this is the last lightning talk, but we still have a few questions. Yes, I have a question. Like, uh, f from a perspective of a CE person, um, to me, Let's Connect and uh, CE Hub are awfully similar. Uh, w so, uh, just uh, in a short, in short, what are the differences, and and maybe which is better? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, I would say that they are not the same, they are not similar and therefore cannot be compared. The C Hub works together to make sure that uh, smaller communities are supported in their activities. Uh, the C Hub supports multinational corporations such as C Spring or uh, they help organize this meeting. Let's Connect is for you to gain expertise in one particular topic. As an example, in June I helped organize a topic for uh, affiliates mostly from Africa and Southeast Asia, about uh, management of a press uh, crisis. What should an affiliate do if they don't have a designated employee for press? 
if there is a crisis in their country, in their media. Uh, some of them know what, how, what to do, some of them have board members that have the expertise, but some of them don't. So we invited uh, communication experts from two countries to share what they've done in the past, show the case study of what can be done, and the Wikimedia Foundation shared their resources on what they can offer affiliates that experience a press crisis. So let's connect as much more about you learning or you teaching about a very particular topic. And also, like, let's connect is global, right? So it's kind of like, like the CIAP has been involved in some of them. Like, I think there was one with Chris Schilling about grant making, where Barbara was also involved in like organizing that, like in late August, beginning, beginning of September. So there's overlap, but it's just like way bigger, and it's also something that the foundation itself is involved in. Whereas like with the C Hub, it's like more something that we are doing all together and le le less oversight from the foundation in that regard. Okay, uh, any other questions? No? Oh, Francisca? I have another advertisement comment for Let's Connect. Uh, if folks in this room were interested in Mehman's presentation around advocacy for freedom of panorama, Let's Connect is going to be putting together an advocacy workshop, which may actually be two or three parts, probably starting sometime in October. And I know this is of interest to groups in the region here, including Estonia, Ukraine, Czech Republic, but of course it is open to anyone. Thank you. Okay, um, there was an impromptu lightning talk by Mechman about how to get to the bus, but um, I think he left, so I think we're good. Thank you for being here.